But this is just a little bit of a historical uh, uh, overview um, what the formats were before. So we used, we used ODB++ and an XML file um, to bring that into ANSYS. There is a little bit of a downside. The user always had to go into his BOM and then um, uh, create an XML file from that based on the reference designators and the, uh, the values of your components. So you import your ODB++ plus the XML file and all the components are in place in the end. Um, that went away when we had the introduction of the EDB file. The EDB file encapsul encapsulate pretty much all the information, the layers, the stack up, the materials, and also the components. So one file fits everything and goes directly from your uh, Altium into ANSYS. But the challenges are still there. If you, for example, do a couple of iterations, you change your designs, and then you want the simulation guy or even want yourself to look at your designs again, of course, you have to re-import everything. Your single file uh, might get lost in emails and, and, and it is not uh, clearly directed to, to uh, the revision number. So that is all things that uh, makes it a bit cumbersome and not as organized. And that is something that Altium and Ansys together changed. So what we have now between those two tools is basically a bridge enabled via your Altium 365, which is giving you a, a, basically, which is using your workspace to move files from your Altium designer over, which is already the case and you do, do that. Um, but then you are able to pull those into answers uh, as well. So, and the cool thing about it is if you then make changes in answers, you can push those designs back into, uh, into your Altium workspace and then pick it up from the other side from Altium Designer. So the MCAT people always had that. They had a nice fluffy flow between the, the, the MCAT tool and their geometry. Now we have the same and with the Git support, even a better way of um, manifesting results and, and, and looking at um, the, 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 the results together with the version control, together with the right design. This is how it looks like once you've downloaded it. There's just basically two buttons, which I really like. It's just push and pull. So you click on push and then you are able to move uh, your, your data over. You can ask a colleague to um, be invited into that. So he gets an email notification. You can even send messages uh, to ask, can you please do this? Can you please have a look at uh, uh, those uh, parameters? And then the um, design goes directly out. So I'm in my Altium. I look at my design and then I have here on the side, the ANSYS Co designer functionality. I select push, ask myself, please check antenna and send it. So it takes a while to transfer the data, um, but does not take uh, too long. I'm now on my phone probably a bit longer. So I have my answers installed. And um, the link is very easy. That's just the answers interface with all those different tools you have available. Um, you just open the framework, nothing else. You go to um, layout links, and then there's here my Altium connection, which I then can tell to check for projects. I should have done it before, I'm sorry. Um, I log on, I put my in, uh, details in. Yeah. <laughs> and it should give me then the link to something is happening in the background. Should give me the link to my company workspace that which I can select in a couple of seconds. Here it is. It's a bit slower than in the office. 
And then I have the view of all my projects. I can select whatever I want. I get a nice review and I can import. So for the ANSYS side, um, who, I'm not sure how many people used HSS in the past. There are basically two interfaces. One is a bit more MCADI. One is a bit uh, better for PCB designers. So this will be opened in the PCB design environment. And I can show you that in a couple of seconds. It asked me to save my file. I do that on my desktop for now. Takes that out for now. And there's my design. So PCB environment in ANSYS. On the one side, you have all the layers. Um, and then also you could check for your, for your layers in, in, in more in detail. So you can see here, um, there's a stack up. All the materials are there. The thicknesses are correct. Um, somebody uh, earlier, I think it was from Cochlea, um, said there's rigid and uh, sometimes um, applications. We have also in that environment a way to uh, separate between rigid design and a flexible design, so that will flow into the simulation as well. You can also assign edge effects on, on, on traces and so on. So it's all included. This is a really nice way of setting everything up. Um, what I've noticed that sometimes if it comes from Altium, um, Altium uh, looks at the geometry a little bit uh, different than ANSYS, but that is not a problem. You can go here via workflow and sanitize that layout, layout quickly and uh, clean it a bit up. There are more features to, to, to look at the layout and make it a bit more robust and strong um, for the simulation. So here's my layout ready. I can see, and I see my antenna here. And what I really like about that partnership now is, be, and, and we always said that, but now we can uh, really leverage it. If I click on my meander structure, my antenna, I can actually directly change. So you see here there's 0.499. I can make that easily 0 0.6 if I want and run it. And even here on that capacitor which came through, I can click on it and I have the value here and I can directly associate a variable to it for tuning, for optimization or whatever and overwrite that parameter and can pass that back. So I leave that for now. The setup is very easy. I mean, I don't need to look at boundary conditions or material properties. What I just do is I select the port and set an excitation. That is basically done with select edges. So I just set my excitation here, right click and set a port. Ports are a bit different because you need to have a look at your grounding scenario, but there's an automated way of doing that. Um, you can, for example, have a microwave port which touches the reference plane underneath your strip line on the reference, uh, uh, yeah, on the ground plane. Or, and if you don't in that case have anything, uh, we can also go into our port, set it to automatic, automated, and it searches a reference somewhere here in the environment that might be good enough for our antenna simulation quickly. That's it. And then you can basically save that file and run the antenna. And I have done that, takes a couple of minutes, especially with the design is a little bit larger. Um, so you can then basically look very, very quickly at S parameters. It's a Wi-Fi Bluetooth antenna. So I was expected to have, I think, 5.2 uh, gigahertz. It resonates not like that in the simulation, but it's quite close. Um, so that is something I can look at or I can look at fields to understand resonances on my board. It's already selected because I picked the geometry in the beginning. And that works, of course, to see the maximas and minimas to really understand how is my antenna operating. Sometimes it's good to see E-fields, sometimes it's good to see uh, uh, losses and power. So it's a nice way of understanding, is it correct or is it not correct, or should I uh, make it longer? In this case, of course, it's easy because it's just one band and uh, or supporting two frequencies, but yeah. So that's a little bit, yeah, antenna pattern is of course as well. So I could e even um, go to far fields and then create a 3D plot. I played around with the capacitors a bit. Yeah, 
that takes away to load the field data. Probably skip it for now. There it is. So antenna pattern as well could be also plotted directly on the structure if you want to give that uh, to your colleagues to understand how the antenna is radiating into what direction. Yeah, so super quick. Um, that works with other designs as well. The solvers are manifold, so you could uh, go here into analysis and then have other options like um, more uh, PCB design tool for DCR and so on that we are talking about in a couple of minutes.